Let's run our daylighting simulations now. First, a quick review. What is it that we need? Well, we are talking about how much daylight is coming in through glazed openings in our building. So we need all surfaces that will interact with the sun, that will block the sun. And so for in our case, for example, we're going to have uh, buildings and uh, the ground. So in the, I'll just use this. Uh, surface for my ground and so so all of these uh, surfaces are going to block the sun or, or it's going to reflect off of this the surfaces and then also the building itself the opaque portion of the envelope is going to block the sun in addition to that i need portions of the building that are letting the sun through and that's my glazing the only other thing i need in addition to that are the surfaces that the the light is going to hit that we're then measuring how much of it is there and those are our work surfaces. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is create another set of layers that are based on this model, but not the same. So let me just turn these off for simplicity. I mean, they're not, they are, so that I can, I've said this a bunch of times, but let me make this clear again. You know, this is our architecture. This is what we're designing. When we simulate, we want the simulations to be in service to this. So we don't want to use our architectural model um because we may change things as we're adjusting daylighting but we not we don't want to say for sure we want that to be what the architecture is going to be changed to be right so we want to have control over daylighting adjust there and then say yes i like these changes and then bring this back into architecture um also we want to make sure that our geometry works for the simulation we're running so the way i would do that uh, in my case i modeled this um sort of thinking ahead towards simulations um, and so it pretty much would work as is, but still I um, took all these layers and I copied them and pasted them into uh, a new set of uh, a new folder for daylighting. So let me turn off my architecture. I actually, um, so this is my daylighting model with um, these so here's here are the surfaces I will need um, to run to, to uh, I will need on to run the, the, the simulation. Um, in addition to that, I have created yeah, I've created partitions because these partitions oh, that's not clear. Let me do this. These partitions will block the sun. Right. So if I have, you know, um, a wall here that's separating, I'm sorry, inside that's, you know, this is the stair core. Um, you know, those need to be in place because they're also uh, opaque to the sun. And then finally, I need my. My work surfaces. I think the way I created those in my case was I went into my I had a floor plan here. And um, so I used my floor plans and so as an example, um, I would take this. Or maybe draw another one to say I want the theater floor plan. Take that curve, offset it. In my case, I'm just doing it a foot. Turn that into a planar surface. And now that I turn into a work plane. Um, and I do that. Well, actually, I'm going to just do it here as an example, and then I'll delete it. If I want to make this a work plane, I come into my Daylight availability, daylight availability analysis, right? Uh, and I assign an area. Now that's a work plane, right? I'm deleting it. I'm going to delete the surface also. Okay. So then when all said and done, I have a 
my building layers, my partitions, and my glazing and work surfaces for all the spaces that I, uh, I want to uh, evaluate. Which should those be? So we're doing a, a LEED 4.1 daylight availability analysis, right? Um, and the rule there is that we, are, we want to um, calculate daylight availability for all the regularly occupied spaces. And the way that's defined in LEED is it's any, sp any space that's a pass-through, so a corridor or I think a lobby in this case uh, does not count because people aren't really working there. They're not staying there. In any space that um, a single person would not occupy for more than an hour a day is not considered either. So I have... Um, That means then for, for uh, my design, I have the, the two floors of the gallery. Um, I did not do the theater at all because the theater is dark. Um, you know, it's, uh, you don't want windows in the theater because you want to control the light there. I did it for the office, the rehearsal space, and the uh, restaurant and kitchen. And so then this is ready to run. Oh, it actually it isn't. Of course, then I need materials on... Uh, all my layers that I'm going to, that are going to block the sun or interact with the sun. Uh, and that's going to include these buildings, this ground, uh, and um, the opaque uh, surfaces of the building. And so the way the daylighting analysis works, you'll remember, is that if I have uh, the layer on in the model, it shows up here, and I can add uh, materials to it. So, for example, for the buildings, you know, I, I just chose, um, let's see, what did I choose? Concrete exterior wall. Then if I turn that off, if I turn off the buildings, they won't be in the model. So that's how you can adjust what's on or off. It's very simple. Um, I now have the buildings on. I've got the ground. Um, I've got, and I've got materials applied. I've got the partitions with the materials inside the building itself. And I chose glazing. Uh, I chose a, a sort of a basic, uh, whatever you want to do. I'm not, I'm not going to get involved in that. So this, this is set to run. I ran it. Um, and these were my results. That is all you would need to do for um, exercise 13 um, as a baseline. And I would suggest as you go through these simulations, if you're just trying to you know, um, just do the assignment, and you don't have things already already outputs. Get your baseline for each of the simulations. So you know, get get some cisterns uh, outputted. Get a, get stair cores. Get this these daylighting basics done, and then come back and iterate. Okay. So um, what do we have here? What would I need you to tell me about this? Remember, we have the um, spatial daylight autonomy and the annual solar exposure. The idea was that we want to get this to be 75% or less or more, uh, and we don't want any um, space to have an ASC over 10%. I'm not going to get in details in this video about that. I'm um, just reminding you that the workflow here. Um, so I've got, you know, I've got a problem with the, the kitchen on the south side, and um, the office um, is crazy over, um, I've got a, a very high ASC there. Um, but okay, I know I know my situation is I'm I'm getting three points except that I have too much light in in a couple of places that I'd have to fix. I could just say done with that if I wanted to. Um, but I'm not going to. I'm going to take this to the next step. I'm going to go ahead and iterate. The first thing I did to iterate um, is uh, I ch just changed the. Actually, I'm sorry. This is slightly wrong. I should point this out. I've, I've uh, got a bunch of runs that I've done for, for this. These are all simulations for this whole um, semester that I'm doing quickly here as an example at the end uh, for, for exercise 13. Um, but they're not in order. And why is that true? It's because um, when you open up Climate Studio, it's going to say what was the order um, the, of the simulations you ran by date. Um, so you have to double click on that and then hit the name column and it will reorder them 
in what how in whatever order you've created uh, alphabetically or numerically. So the actual the first one I ran was this one, and I used um, single pane glass that uh, had a T vis of almost ninety uh, percent. How would I know that? If I click on this eye here, I see everything that was that was on in my simulation, and I can um, review that. And so I can see here that um, the uh, glazing I chose had 88% TVs. So my iteration, and this would be a completely acceptable thing to do if you want to iterate and sort of get more points or, or um, head more toward um, actually using these simulations uh, for what they were intended. Uh, I did a quick iteration where I just changed the glazing. So this now has um, TVS glazing of 55% because I had um, here, I was saying I've got plenty of daylight, I've got too much in two spaces. Um, just by making that change, I, um, you know, I improved this. Uh, the ASC a, a lot, but you know, still still really high. Um, and then graphically, I've got the Lux on because that's the the, the uh, most um, graphically clear depiction. So um, ASC, I mean SDA, ASC, average Lux. Okay, but then let's say I want to take it uh, further, and I really want to um, try to. Uh, First of all, optimize my um, my lead daylight availability, but also I need to think about comfort. And so we, uh, in daylighting, we dealt with comfort with a glare study. So I ran a glare study on this setup, and as would be expected, I've got a huge amount of glare um, in on this south uh, office area because it's a bunch of glazing. There's there's no shading, um, and I. want to fix that. I want to look at that. So if I pick a, remember I can change these to specific day. Um, so I can even look at this in a more um, granulated fashion. You can see that in the summer, as would be expected, it's much less than it is in the winter because in the winter the sun is um, lower to the south and it's going to uh, come in here deeper. Um, so if I pick a, uh, let's see, I'm going to go to Let's say I want to look at this day and consider how to where the sun's going to be. I'm going to this, this is remember these little pies are just um, view directions. Um, so I'm going to look straight out of that south window um, on this day. I choose the hour and day. I mean I, I could have this set here too. It's the same thing. I'm choosing this hour and this day. I just wanted to see what it was on that day um, in actuality. The, the amount of glare and then I can I can run a radiance render so if I click on this little camera here this view opens up I change the false color I see that you know this building is great it's blocking the sun a lot um, but I can I can extrapolate that if this and I could even change this range here so I can see the orb of the sun a little bit more. But what am I learning from this? I can see, well, you know, first of all, it's great. This building is going to block the sun a lot of the time and if, I, if I'm trying to block the sun. Um, but I can see that if I extrapolate, you know, the sun's going to pass over here in the winter on this day. Um, it's I, I can't really use a horizontal overhang. It's just to be really long. You can see, I mean, it'd have to be out to this building, right, to, to block the sun at this point. So I'm probably going to want to try something else. I could change the glazing, or I can try uh, to change to add some shading. Uh, I mean, some some vertical shading. So if I come back to my model, I did um, implement this shading. And so if I come back, oops, and 
consider that same day. With that the shading in place, I can see that that's going to have a fairly major effect. I could try to angle it, and you know, I could just whatever I, I can do, whatever I want to with the shading. But the point is now, I can rerun this simulation. By the way, here's another point I should make. This thing is still running because it takes. Or did it finish already? Maybe it just finished. These can take a while, but as long as things aren't changing. Um, very much in the outputs, you can stop them. Um, so you don't need to, to let a, a simulation run all the way to the end. If I haven't made that clear, then make, make sure that's clear now. So I implemented, so this is without the shading, and this is with it. We get a fairly big difference, especially on that day, but even generally. All right. Um, so now I have done an iteration where I'm dealing with comfort uh, that's unrelated directly to daylight availability and typically what we're doing is we're saying once we get the daylight availability that we like we can deal with um like i could have done this inside the building i could have had these the shading be you know these could have been desks in here and i could have put partitions or something or you know cubicles um but anyway so we we, we get the daylight that we want and then we adjust for comfort um then what I did in this case is I went back and, and I ran another daylighting availability to see how I'm doing. Uh, and I'm this is great. I'm still very, I've still got plenty of daylight. And I've, um, by implementing this one um, shading uh, intervention, um, I have dropped my ASC in, in the uh, office dramatically. So if again, let's compare it to the one before it. Was it 72% without the shading, uh, with the shading, uh, and basically, what is it? it was, yeah, 6%. So I'm, well, I'm, I'm below the 10% that it's required. Um, and I could definitely come do the same thing with this kitchen, or I could, it's a kitchen. Maybe I don't want that window there. Maybe I want to um, make it smaller or put it somewhere else. So this would be an excellent series of daylight availability, daylight availability studies for exercise 13. Uh, the only thing I would, you know, because I've, I've, I've started um, with something that was pretty poor. I improved it with an iteration. I went and looked at comfort, ran some uh, radiation maps to, to um, come up with a shading strategy, which, by the way, the shading is not on at this point. Then I added this shading, showed a, a, a market improvement in my comfort in this space, and then I... Uh, ran daylight availability again to see that actually the shading really improves that also. Um, so, and then I could extrapolate and say, you know, I could take the same strategy to this window and, and improve this even more. So I would have a, a clear direction I was going. This would be definitely all I would absolutely need to do. And like I said, to, to get decent credit on this, I could have stopped with the first one. As long as I'm uh, showing the outputs, I'm saying something about the benchmark um, you know this is just understanding why we're getting the three credits what the maybe the problem is here that we've identified that we've got um, two areas that have uh, way too much light uh, daylight uh, and then I could even just say you know so this would have to be worked on but then we of course actually did work on it and uh, considerably fixed that problem so daylight availability done